if you key line the system, and this is going to be complicated, I'll have to come back a bit more. The water that falls onto the landscape is caught in, in, in diversion channels. Well, first of all, you key line plow the landscape so that water infiltrates really good into the system. But when there is rain, runoff, it's captured in diversion channels and put into a series of ponds that are usually linked. And so that, you know, here's a, a high ponds and that's connected and that goes way over to this pond, that one goes over to this pond, that pond. And so that throughout this, they're linked together by channels so that if you want to drain ponds, you can drain them into different places. It's a system of holding water in the landscape as long as possible creating water storages, and reforesting the ridges and the steeper parts of the land. So key line almost always involves tree planting. And I'll talk about that more later. Here's our system. Notice water comes in, it flows out as quick as possible. In permaculture, we're trying to run the water through as many duties or as many uses as possible before it exits. You could use that same schematic for energy flow in the system. How do you keep the energy flow in the system as long as possible? Nutrients such as nitrogen, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, calcium. Instead of just letting it zip out the system, you try to bounce it around. In the, you could also use this for economy, for money. You have big box stores in Missoula, the money just pretty much goes right out. You have a lot of small businesses who are buying from each other. You bounce that money around in the economy a lot longer. So it's again, keep things in the system. system here's a valley system. Water falls on it, it runs off. And if you key line the system, and this is going to be complicated, I'll have to come back a bit more. The water that falls onto the landscape is caught in, in, in diversion channels. Well, first of all, you key line plow the landscape so that water infiltrates really good into the system. But when there is rain runoff, it's captured in diversion channels and put into a series of ponds that are usually linked. And so that, you know, here's a, a high ponds and that's connected and that goes way over to this pond, that one goes over to this pond, that pond. And so that throughout this, they're linked together by channels so that if you want to drain ponds, you can drain them into different places. It's a system of holding water in the landscape as long as possible, creating water storages, and reforesting the ridges and the steeper parts of the land. So key line almost always involves tree planting. And I'll talk about that more later. Here's our system. Notice water comes in, it flows out as quick as possible. In permaculture, we're trying to run the water through as many duties or as many uses as possible before it exits. You could use that same schematic for energy flow in the system. How do you keep the energy flow in the system as long as possible? Nutrients, such as nitrogen, nitrogen phosphorus, potassium, calcium. Instead of just letting it zip out the system, you try to bounce it around in the system. You could also use this for economy, for money. You have big box stores in Missoula. The money just pretty much goes right out. You have a lot of small businesses who are buying from each other. You bounce that money around in the economy a lot longer. So it's again, keep things in the system. So when you get into key line, you start looking at the landscape and you say, oh yes, I see all the contours. I can see, you know, it's kind of like seeing below ground to see what the water is doing below ground. And, and when you look, and again, it's th seeing in contours, where's water flow going to happen? And if you had a system of swales in the landscape that were planted out, this is, you know, what it might look like. As far as I believe, I was told that this is actually uh, drawn from a system in Turkey that actually exists, where they swaled the landscape, planted trees along the swales, and then they can do agriculture in between because now the landscape is more stabilized. You don't have this erosion that just runs on down. So you again, keep the water in the system and make a nicer microclimate. Sometimes if you have a really extra heavy rainfall, the swale totally fills up and then the water's got to go somewhere. So ideally, you will have a 
overflow one part of the of the swale. Actually, what they'll have in between, they'll have little dams in the swale that are a little bit less tall, so that the swale will be a series of little ponds. But if the water does flow, you have one end where there's an outlet channel which goes into the next swale, or off into a natural drainage way, because you want to get. You don't if if you didn't have outlets for the swales, you had a really heavy rainfall event, and all of a sudden this swale, all those water it burst the wall, all the water started flowing out, it hits this one, boom, burst that wall. You can have a cascading series of failures of all those swales and cause a heck of a gully event. So you have to really, you have to flood proof your swale system. And that's important to take note of. Gabions, that's a term we have to cover. A gabion is a rock filled wire mesh baskets they're used for erosion control and erosion gullies. This is Tim Murphy building one. <clears throat> You've all seen them all along the highways to hold up the banks. Those are called gabions, G-A-B-I-O-N. And they have to be keyed into the bank. This will probably be backfilled a bit here. You don't want the water to be able to make an end run. You always have the middle a little bit lower than the edges so that the water is always going to run off here. And you always want an apron on this side or the water as it falls over because in a flash flood that'll fill up like a little lake it'll flow over and then it'll dig a hole here and then it'll undercut it and then of course it's useless so you always have to build an apron, What's the apron? Th that doesn't have an apron he's i'm sure he's going to put one in because 